Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to NMNTS Monday Night Thunder by Motor Sims Racing Magazine. Julie, we got a pretty exciting race going on tonight for the Continental Tire 150 from Watkins Glen. Looking forward to being a pretty good race today. I want to thank the Motor Sim Racing Magazine being on board as the title sponsor this week. Good to see you again. How's everything been going for you, buddy? It's been going well. Uh, been looking forward to this one, seeing some trucks around Watkins Glen. Currently on your screen, you're going to see everybody qualifying as we're just jibber-jabbering here in the background. Everybody in groups of 10, you get five minutes out on the track to try and set your best time. Currently riding with one of the cars out on the track, Bradley Wilson. He is in the 66 instead of the 88 here tonight. And the BA graphics, Hancock oil can, Chevy machine. I think that's a Dale Earnhardt inspired paint scheme too, if I'm not mistaken. Now on board, ladies and gentlemen, we're running around with Ryan Daniels with the 67 Walgreens Chevy Silverado. He'll be coming through turn eight here in a moment, coming back to the green flag, take his first qualifying lap, Let's see if he can hold on and gain some. And here he goes, coming to the green to take his first lap qualifying. Coming into turn one here, Dewey, it's pretty tough, heavy braking coming down here at the bottom of the hill. You've got to get on the brake pretty hard to make that turn and downshift way early as you can see the number 87 slid through the first corner. That's definitely something you've seen a lot. I think we're going to see a lot of that tonight, Dewey. you got a lot of hard drivers out here 
A lot of times when you get these guys out here in these stock cars coming from the ovals, if they haven't got a lot of practice in, they're going to be missing a few braking points. So it's going to be tough getting around those corners. You can see a lot of people smoking the tires coming into turn one until they get used to a point of braking and they can get through that corner clean. And that's the key right there is getting through turn one clean. If you can do that here at Watkins Glen, you can generally maintain a nice, solid, consistent, fast lap. The key is to be smooth because these trucks get really, really loose on the throttle and have occasion to whip out on you. I've definitely seen that a lot in practice. It's like right now we're on with the Jimmy John Budweiser truck. It looks like a little Kevin Harvick themed truck in the number 54 Silverado with Kevin, a or excuse me, Chris Akers. He's coming out of turn three right now, heading up to, excuse me, he's coming out of turn six right now, turning up to turn seven. See if he can pick up any on his second lap coming around. Got a pretty good exit coming out of eight, comes off the rumble strips and back to the throttle hard, coming to the straight start finish. Looks like he didn't improve that time. Jason Alexander currently quickest. One minute, 13 seconds, five, two, four. Chris Akers got a one minute, 13 seconds, six, four, one. Kind of like this qualifying style, Dewey. Looks like you got five minutes of driving out there for these guys. So they might be able to get three laps in if they can hurry. Bradley's coming out of turn eight. See if he can improve on that 114.906. And the BA Graphics quality goods from Hancock's. Pick up the oil can, ladies and gentlemen. One of our sponsors here again tonight. If you touch base while we're riding with that truck, go out and visit them at oilcanhancocks.com. Pick up your quality goods there. There's a lot of men's fragrance, good stuff like that. Looks like he was able to pick up a little speed that time around. Finish that lap at a 113.65. Now, speaking on those oil cans there, Tom, I know our uh, guy up running the cameras, running everything behind the scenes, Tom Jinks, he said he received his shipment of his products today, and he said uh, he was pretty happy with it. Yeah, definitely. From what I understand, it turned his old lady on pretty good when he put on the Hancock oil cans men's fragrance. So those of you listening out there on YouTube land right now, if you're watching... Ladies and gentlemen, ladies, go out, buy your boyfriends, your husbands, some quality King Cox goods at the oil can, or who knows, get it for your father for Father's Day. You got all kinds of opportunities to come up and take care of that. That'll wrap it up for them. First five qualifiers, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the next five going out on the track, and they'll be turning their laps. They have five minutes to run around this track to get a top time. Well, the first truck out here in this group, that is the 31 of Clayton Curtis. Looks like 114 of Jared Beasley will be behind him. 74 of Jesse Mason. 
looks like the 114 of Jerry Beef is going to be coming out of turn 7, heading into turn 8. Come around the corner, kick, check flag for his first green flag lap, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty quick driver. We saw him in practice run some pretty decent laps. It'll be interesting to see what he's able to do here in qualifying. He also got the 18 of Blake Nice out there and the 85 of Zach Lindgren. Zach is the second driver uh, with a Miami Dolphins-themed uh, truck. Anyone that either did not see or they don't pay attention to the NFL, Jay Cutler signed with the Dolphins. And uh, interesting series of events, and it seems that some guys are supporting that move here with the Dolphins truck here tonight. Yeah, I'm trying to figure that one out. Not a big Jay Cutler fan. I think he's probably going to go out and get hurt and collect his $10 million after week three. But that being said... You gotta take a gamble when your primary guy Ryan Tamahoon broke down like he did. Coming back to racing, Jared Beasley was just going through the bus stop, ended up getting a corner cut and had to slow down a little bit. So he's gonna have a pretty slow first lap coming around, but we will see what he does here on his next lap. As Clayton Curtis is coming across to take his first lap. Looks like uh, Blake the 18, needs to come through to take the check the flag to just complete another lap. His first one qualifies at a 112 with a 31. That's good enough for quick time. I was just going to say Blake Deese was looking really good out there, and he set down a wonderful lap. I do. That's an improvement of six tenths over his practice time. Best practice time of 112.9. He's in there with a 112.3. Zach Lindgren into the wall there in the 85. Going to loop it around no, here. Not good. Hard. Looks like he got caught up there in the S corners. It's one of those things up there. If you get in the throttle too hard, come back through the right hand or in the S corners, Dewey. Chances are you're going to have a good opportunity of spinning. That throttle will zip out from you. Yeah, we've seen that quite a bit here with these guys. Looks like Blake overshot the corner there. That turn one is definitely tricky. Yeah, Dewey, definitely. Turn one's a tough one to keep an eye on, so it'll be interesting to see how these boys do coming down to the hard braking zone. You know, if you look at the signs on your right-hand sign, you got 300, 200, 100. Do you see many guys breaking after the 300 sign? They are, chances are, they're going to go right through the corner off and get loose and spin out in the, in the dirt and the dust and the marbles there of turn one. Yeah, I know practice is key, especially on a track like Watkins Glen, where these guys don't run very much. So uh, I think the guys up front will probably be the guys who practiced and, and got it dialed in for this race here tonight. Blake Neese going to spin it there into the wall out of turn one. Blake Nee's currently quick, a 112.316. Jared Beasley still trying to improve his time. 
The session will be over when Jared Beasley comes across the line. Well, with that group exiting the track, Tom, we got the next group coming on out. The 17 of Josh Sturgill on the track now, going around for his warm-up lap. He looks like he's coming through the S's pretty solid, keeps it under control. The 12 of Corey Walters will be joining him in this session. Looks like the two of DJ Hargrove also out there for this session. Uh, 78 of Cody West is out on the track. The nine of Aiden Young also out on the track. Seventeen, Josh Sturgill coming out of turn eight. He's going to be making his run for the green flag this time by the flag stand. Siri comes in to break in for his breaking point. Looks like he gets her wood up pretty good. Gets the next corner pretty smooth. Comes out decent. A little wide, gets a little loose on the throttle, but then he's back onto the gas coming up through the S's. The right hand turn. Here's the tricky one right here. Some guys grab too much speed going through and catch that apron and get pushed out right into the wall like you just saw. With Josh Sturgill. Also out there with this group, the 11 of Blake Fallone. Fisherman DJ Hargrove in the number two Toyota. So he's coming up hard into the bus stops, gets it down under braking, makes a turn right in, jams it back to the left, comes out. Let's see if he can hold it coming out. Got a little loose spins and whoa, hangs onto it, stays on the track, but does spin all the way around, no damage. And he will check out and get a toe back to the pits. No, definitely a tough break for him. A lot of these guys, I think, still trying to adjust to the trucks turning right and left here tonight. Yeah, it's definitely a different, different dynamic. Too. A lot of these guys used to turn left, and you know, you get the road court racers out there always teasing the oval guys about go fast, turn left, and vice versa. But you know what? It's a challenging circuit out here in these trucks. They're pretty heavy, and they get they got a lot of horsepower. So without any kind of a traction control, which a lot of the road racers are using now, for example, I was able to use that in the 488 GT this weekend at Watkins Glen in the Ferrari. Um, it's really tough to hold around the rear end of these cars without traction control. They just want to whip loose every time. Aiden Young in the 9 truck sets the new quick time in a 112.184. There's just a couple minutes left in this session. Blake Fallone was able to put down a good lap. He is third with a 112.773. It'll be interesting to see if Blake can pick up on the last lap. He qualified. You know, during practice, you're in the 112 with the 3, so he's about 4 tenths slower than he was earlier. Let's see if he can't pick it up this time around. Two minutes left on this session currently. My board, Blake Sloan, entering turn 7. He makes the turn pretty good. Keeps on track, comes off the rumble strips. 
breaks down for a hard right hand or gets in just a little too deep, slides it, drifts it through the corner and gets back on the throttle and able to maintain. That will hurt his time a little bit, but he still ends up qualifying with a 114.47 that lap. He will not improve at this time on his fifth lap. One truck I've been watching here, the 78 of Cody West, he's currently fourth quick with a 112.833, but he is using quite a bit of brake out there. As you see a lot of smoke coming from that truck as he's getting into these hard braking points. You have to think, hopefully he's just doing that for qualifying, because come race time, if he's braking that hard, that's going to cause a lot of problems later on in his race. Yeah, definitely. He's also like he's probably going to need to make a brake bias adjustment to it. He might have a little bit too much rear brake in there, and that'll happen on these road courses with these trucks. You get in there hard brake in that rear end, it'll lock up and just kind of shoot you sideways. That being said, if those of you out there in TV land and YouTube land are just tuning in, we want to welcome you to Monday Night Thunder for NMNTS by Motor City Racing Magazine. We're at the Continental Tire 150. We've been in the middle of qualifying now. We're getting ready to wrap that up shortly. We've got about 10 cars left to run, ladies and gentlemen, here at Watkins Glen. It's going to be an exciting race tonight. Uh, we've got eight total turns that these drivers will deal with going throughout. We've got a pretty cool track here, which is nice. So we've got about an 85 degree track. That'll give them a little bit more grip and make it a little bit easier to hang on to. But if these guys don't hit the braking points and their acceleration points just right, you're going to see them, one, get tight and push off the track, or two, they're going to get really loose coming out of exit. Session is over for these guys. Aiden Young was the best in that session and also the fastest overall currently. 112 184 is the time to beat. We heard race control right. This should be the last group. Lots of drivers taking a scratch here tonight, Tom. So that'll make qualifying a little bit quicker. First car are going to be out here in the 28. That is Alan Westman. Alan Westman running the no-brakes television TV car tonight to the 28 Silverado out of Gislin, Minnesota. He's a pretty good road racer. We've got to see him race a couple times before. He's one of the team members from HRL Motorsports who are running the no-brakes TV paint tonight. Be interesting to see what kind of lap time he can put down. He had a pretty solid lap during practice, and we'll ride on board with him here quick to see how he ends up. Also, 32 PJ Popham. Glad to see him back here tonight. He is on track for his qualifying time. 71 Brian Hartford. He is on track trying to take his qualifying time. 81 of Andrew Cardnail. Got the 19 of Mike Bruno. He's and one half Alan of those suspect cars. Coming out of turn eight, to come back to check the flag to start his green flag qualifying run. Seems to get through there pretty smooth. Alan's always been a pretty good road racer, so it'll be interesting to see how he competes tonight. Also in this group, the 59 of David Levine and the 7 of Tyler Justice, the other half of the suspect trucks here tonight. One thing that I found, Dewey, at Watkins Glen, track position is everything. For those of you ladies and gentlemen out there that got to watch any of the cup races this weekend, the live ones, looks like we have a spin in the in the bus stop. That's going to hold up, guys, on the qualifying lap. Um, Alan's able to get by safely, but anyway, track position is key. If you can get out front and build any kind of a lead, it's going to be very tough to very, very tough to catch up because what you're going to see is you're going to see caution flags in the corners of some of these spins. You're only going to see a full course caution if you've got a really big multi wreck pull out or multi car accident. So, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this should be a pretty quickly run race tonight. We should see a lot of green flag pit stops, and it'll be interesting to see how all the boys handle these tonight.
Alan Westman comes by to get his first true qualifying lap in, 113.453. Tyler Justice in the wall off of turn one. Alan Westman overshot the corner trying to avoid the seven. That's one thing that's tough about it out here. You know, do you get caught up within the traffic in your qualifying lap? You're going to get slowed up. It's just unfortunate that's the way it is. You get multi-car trucks on the team trying to qualify. That happens, and hopefully sometimes you can get by smooth, and you'll be one of those trucks out there that can get an actual clean lap. Mike Bruno to the top of the charts, 112.104. One thing that's very easy during this race, ladies and gentlemen, you can see it's very easy to overdrive these trucks through the corners. Um, pick up a lot of momentum coming to these corners, you lose focus for just one second and you miss that break point. It's very tough to recover speed-wise. PJ, pop them to the top of the charts. 112-101. Very close lap times between him and Mike Bruno. Andrew Cardinal to the top now, 111.993. But here that's comes a, Mike Bruno. That's a fast lap right there, Dewey. That's one of the fastest we saw all practice. Andrew Cardinal was up towards the top during his practice run, so it'll be interesting to see if he can hold that up. Mike Bruno gets loose off of one, trying to save it. Sitting sideways in the middle of the track, but he did not make contact with the wall. We got Alan Westman coming out of turn eight. We'll see if that traffic earlier in the lap had any impact on his overall time. He improves to a 112.42. That's six quickest right now. We'll see if he can get another lap in before time expires. Oh, he's going to miss turn one big time. Got in a little late. He's going to pull over to the side and exit to pit road. Tyler just as quick time now, 111.647, three tenths faster than second place right now. Riding on board with the number 59 and Dave Levine, currently ninth quickest. We'll see if he can improve on his lap this time around. He gets her through the bus stops pretty clean. Saw him on that wheel back and forth, but it looks like he's doing whatever he can to catch PJ Popham up in front of him. Through the S as Tyler Justice wrecked his truck. That'd be interesting to see if that happens during the race or not. But he currently has quick time. Yeah, Dewey, that first lap, he definitely sent it as the dirt racers like to say going throughout this track. It'll be interesting to see. It looks like Dave Levine's got a pretty quick lap going right here. Let's see if he can pick up a little draft on the front stretch off of PJ Popham and see how he ends up. Matt, I'll wrap it up for qualifying. Well, ladies and gentlemen out there in YouTube land and TV land, I hope you've enjoyed that as much as we did. We just wrapped up qualifying. We'll have a starting grid here shortly. Here at uh, Monday Night Thunder MNTS by Motor Sims Racing Magazine, ladies and gentlemen. Go check them out there on their website at motorsimsracing.com. This is the Connell Tire 150 from Watkins Glen. We're going to have sixty laps of live hard racing tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We're looking for quite a bit of excitement here, Dewey. It's going to be an interesting race seeing these guys come over to the road course. But a lot of these guys have out here been practicing hard and getting their trucks underneath them. So once we see these qualifying runs wrap up. We will go to gridding in a few minutes here, and it looks like we're going to have an opportunity to take a short break, give everybody a chance to go to the restroom. Uh, ladies and gentlemen out there watching in TV land, get your chance to go to the fridge, get a little snack, get ready for this 
hard racing. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, that'll wrap it up. Your quick time for the night, qualifying number one tonight. The number seven, Tyler Justice in the Sinspec TV truck. He will win the take home the BA Graphics Pole Award this evening. See if we can't catch up to him here shortly. Try to run down to the pit road doing and get an interview from him. Hang on one moment. Here with the Pole Award winner, Tyler Justice. That's a great lap you put down there, Tyler, and uh, looks like you really had the truck working well there. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, it feels real good. I just hope we can uh, keep it up front and stay out of trouble. I don't think we're going to have a lot of cautions in this race, considering it's a road course. And uh, yeah, uh, just, yeah, just hope I can keep it up front and stay out of trouble, like I said. Yeah, definitely in the Continental 150 here at Watkins Glen, Tyler, it's tough. That's going to be the key. If you can keep it out front, you can go a long way and have that clean drive and not have to worry about people missing their braking points in front of you. And, and at some point, you're going to end up possibly catching lap traffic. That should be pretty interesting here with, you know, really no full course cautions here at road course. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially if you catch them in the wrong spot. If you catch them in a zone where it's hard to pass, it's going to be pretty tricky. But Hopefully that doesn't happen. We're able to catch them in some good passing zones and uh, get by them lap cars pretty pretty easy. Yeah, definitely, buddy. Again, congrats on winning the V8 Graphics Pole Award. Looking forward to throwing an inter another interview to you later tonight. Hopefully we'll catch you in the top three and get to talk to you again. Anybody right. you'd like to thank out there tonight, bud? Yes, sir. I want to thank uh, Simspec for being on cars always. Thank all my teammates. Good luck to them in the race. And, uh, you guys in the booth, Bradley and Michael, and yeah. Perfect. Sounds good tonight. Good luck tonight, Tyler. Have some fun, and we'll talk to you later. All right, man. Appreciate it. Well, there you have it, Dewey. Qualifying's all complete. These boys will go through and grid here in a moment. Get up on the track. Get this thing started. What are you thinking tonight's going on tonight? How do you see this panning out, this race here? Well, I think this is going to be a race of survival. Like Tyler said, with it being a road course, you're not going to see too many full course cautions unless there is a truly huge pileup. With that being said, and these trucks being real loose, I mean, even the fastest cars up there were spinning in practice and spinning in qualifying. So I think it's just going to be survival of the fittest here tonight. And if you can keep yourself moving in the correct direction and not take a lot of damage from any of the smaller wrecks, you will see yourself in a good situation here tonight. Yeah, definitely. That's for sure, buddy. It's going to be a lot of fun watching these guys go around this track. It should be an interesting opportunity here tonight to go through. And for those of you watching, ladies and gentlemen, we want to give a big shout out to our sponsors tonight. You got Simspec PC Towers, who's going to be going through. And there's one of these onboard sponsors. Good night. Go check them out at simspecpc.com. Or you can. They have a great opportunity there that you can take a look at as far as building a sim computer. Get on here on iRacing and have some fun with us. Budget-wise, they can set you up with a lower budget. If you don't have a lot of money to spend right now or if you want to spend everything you got, you can absolutely go after that. In addition to that, I'd like to thank uh, the Quality Goods of Hancock's Oil Can. Go check them out at www.oilhancocks.com. Excuse me, oilcanhancocks.com. Check out their website, order up some of their fragrances for the men and, and boyfriends in your life or significant others, however you want to look at it. Give them a shot, give them a go. It's always good to have the sponsorship that we receive from these two fine sponsors each and every week, race in, race out. They definitely support those who support the racing, whether it's in real life or here on the sim. Um, you know, definitely go check those guys out as they're supporting uh, the racers, uh, the league owners, and the broadcasters. And uh, that's pretty awesome that they do that. So if you're looking for anything along lines of PC or just smelling good for the ladies or 
whatever it may be that they can provide goods and services for you, make sure to check those guys out. We should be lining up, getting ready to go here on the front straightaway. Give you a quick rundown. Tyler Justice will start on the pole. Andrew Cardinal to his outside. Brian Hartford qualified in third. PJ Popham fourth. Mike Bruno is fifth. Aiden Young is sixth. Blake Nee seventh. Alan Westman eighth. David Levine ninth. Blake Falone qualified tenth. Eleventh will be Cody West. 12th, Clayton Curtis. 13th is the 12 of Corey Walters. 14th is the Fishman, DJ Hargrove. 15th is Chris Akers. 16th, Jason Alexander. 17th is Jared Beasley. 18th is the 66 of Bradley Wilson. 19th is Jesse Mason. 20th was Matt Skipper. 21st, Ryan Daniels. 22nd, Zach Lindgren. Uh, the read through from the scratches, it looks like it'll be Gordon Larson Jr. in 23rd, Derek Robinson 24th, 25th was Josh Sturgill. He did not get a time out there uh, for his qualifying. It looks like Jake Little will be behind him. It looks like we're underway here. Standing start race here tonight. Well, I was unprepared for that, but Tyler Justice out into the lead. And we are underway here at Watkins Glen. Tyler Justice into the wall right away. Andrew Cardinal is going to be right on him. Side by side in the bus stop here. This usually doesn't end well. Andrew Cardinal thinks better of it. Well, Tom, a bit of a unique start here as we complete lap number one, a standing start with the trucks here tonight. Yeah, I think that caught most of the drivers by surprise. Another unique feature of the road course is do we occasionally you'll go from a standing start. Normally you get one flag going around a warm-up lap before they take the green. But a little thing different going on tonight. It looks like we've got a few cars out front. The number seven, the Tyler Justice, is leading. It looks like the number 19, the Mike Bruno, is running second. Or, excuse me, I have that car wrong. That is the number 81 of Andrew Cardinal and the TN Designs running second. It seems PJ Popham had some troubles there at the start. He was scheduled to start fourth, but PJ Popham not on the track currently. I have to say, Tom, so far so good. Everybody looks to be getting through clean. Uh, a couple of battles have gone on, but everybody giving each other plenty of room. I think everyone understands that at a road course, you've got to give each guy extra room, especially being in these heavy trucks, as it's not going to work battling as hard as you would on an oval. Yeah, definitely, Dewey. These guys are going to be able to uh, sit back and get in a groove and... You know, they'll be able to get, there'll be an opportunity to do some passing. Bradley Wilson here, around probably. in turn one. I see Bradley Wilson got into the back of Matt Skipper a little bit on the binders, looped it around. He's able to keep going. Bradley was running 20th at the time.
Oh, we got one spinning hard into the wall. The 47 out of turn one gets loose. And he gathers. I didn't get a chance to see who gathered. He gathered a couple drivers back there. We also had a spin so in the bus stop. I might have even missed the number. This is definitely a track that if you're using a spotter tonight, it's going to be tough. There's going to be several corners out there where you can't see everything going on. Spotters up to the top of the tower. <coughs> it's really hard for everybody to see all the way around the racetrack. Right now, it looks like a battle to be shaping up here for a second. Side and gets by the 19. That's David Levine taking away fourth position from Mike Bruno in the fifth position there in turn one. The 71 of Brian Hartford catching Andrew Cardinale for that's for second currently. Tyler Justice still out in front by 1.3 seconds. Blake Neese in the 18th moved his way up to 6th. After qualifying 7th, he's currently 3.1 seconds back to the leader, Tyler Justice, in the 7th. He seems to be running away. He's got a 1.3 second lead right now in the 81 on Andrew Cardinal. And a 1.5 second lead on Brian Hartford in the 71. We've got a lot of race left, do we? You see, we're just now coming to take the 6th flat, 6th green, 6th. Starting the sixth lap this time by the green start podium. Is Tyler Justice doing exactly what he said he wanted to do in the interview we had with him for the pole award. Just get out front and try and stay away from everybody and stay out of trouble. And so far he is doing just that. Your biggest mover right now in the 33 truck, that is Austin Jones. He started on the tail of the field, and he is up to 14th. The 29th to 14th right now for the 33 of Austin Jones. Off track a little bit, didn't lose much. He is definitely charging through the field right now. With these road course races, there's a lot of picking and choosing. When is the right time to pass the car in front of you? You have to make the right decision because the wrong decision could take you and him and a whole lot of other trucks out here at Watkins Glen. Brian Hartford makes the pass in the S's for second. Andrew Cardinal all over his bumper is going to try and get him back here in the bus stop. He may think better of it, and he does. Looks like P.J. Poppins has been able to get out on the track. Do we use two laps down? Still running pretty quick at this time, but it looks like he's having a seven. A Tyler Justice starting to catch him. He should be picking up some lap traffic here in the next four or five laps um, coming up, getting through the field. And here in just a couple of laps, we've got trucks all over Watkins Glen right now. Almost anywhere you look, you can find some action. Yeah, it definitely looks like a big competition right now. So they're going to be pretty balled up there for second, third, fourth, and fifth position. As Brian Hartford made the pass on Adrian Cardinal and able to open up a pretty good gap on him, that 71 truck really working well for Brian right now. See if he can't maybe run down the seven of Tyler Justice. Yeah, definitely, Dewey. It's all about being smooth out here. Looks like a lot of these drivers have settled in. They're... Hitting their marks pretty well. We have a few guys going off track here and there, but that's expected at a road course, you know. Um, sometimes they just get a little hot into the corner and are unable to turn the car. But 
that being said, we've got some pretty good racing solid going on right now. Got a pretty good battle going on right now between the 18, the 81 of Andrew Cardinal, the 19 of Mike Bruno, and coming up behind him in the 25 car. Or excuse me, the 9 car, Aiden Young in position 7. Andrew Cardinale falling back right now. Not sure if that's a plan strategy or if his truck's just kind of getting away from him. Austin Jones working on DJ Hargrove. That's for 12th here coming down into turn number one. Austin Jones going to break real hard and get by the two truck. Suck it down to the bottom perfectly. Austin Jones is on the move in that 33 truck right now. He started tail of the field, and he is trying to fight his way into a top 10 here. Yeah, Austin's been pretty quick. He's made up a lot of trap. <clears throat> A lot of spots since the start of this race. By far, our biggest mover moving almost 18 positions. For the most part, the top 10 has kind of fallen in line. They're kind of running, with the exception of David Levine, started 19th up to 3rd, and Blake Neese started 17th up to 4th. But the top 10 cars are all pretty much run, still running in the top 10. Austin Jones up to 11th, gets around the 11th of Blake Falone, but Blake not going away, going to try and fight him back here through the S's. Looks like Austin's going to get him coming out. Austin Jones picking him off one at a time here shortly. He's going to be fighting Clayton Curtis, and that's for the top 10. The 33 truck is the truck to watch right now. He is really storming through the field. The battle for fifth is on. Mike Bruno able to get by Andrew Cardinale. Through seven coming out of eight, and it doesn't look like Andrew's going to be able to get him back. You know, do we like we saw the other day in the cup race here live uh, from Watkins Glen? We've got pretty much green flag pit stops all day long, so I wonder if any of these guys are out there at this point have even saw that and have started to save fuel already. The key is, as long as you can remain on the track, the quicker you're going to be able to make up time on anybody else that needs to pit. So those guys running up front, if they're running hard like they normally will, you know, you'll see them moving fast. They'll be going through here uh, really quick times. But you know what? Their equipment may go away from them. They may use their fuel a lot harder than, say, somebody running around in the 20th position. We could see definitely fuel miles become a big factor here at Watkins Glen tonight. I definitely agree with you there as the leaders are in lap traffic currently. Matt Skipper, he's going a lap down. PJ Popham, he's there as well. A lot of solo racing going on here tonight, Dewey. It looks like we are on lap 12 of 60 at this point. i tell you what, though, if it wasn't for you able to have in this lap timing tracker we have with us up here in the booth, it would be really tough to be able to figure out who's leading and who's not. We've got lap cars going in. We've got lap cars mixed in with each other. Lead lap cars. The cars are pretty strung out. 
this is what makes for exciting road course racing. It's those guys right now that are running in that 7th, 8th, and ninth, and 10th position. They're really going to have to move to get caught up to the leader. So there's really, unfortunate as it is, you get some tight racing, mistakes are going to be made. After a while, you may get a little, after these tires start to go away, these car trucks are really going to push and slide around a lot more than they have at the early running here, buddy. As I've been watching the 33 of Austin Jones, he is in 10th right now. Working on the inside of Clayton Curtis for 9th. Looks to be a drag race coming to the stripe here. Austin Jones has been really strong. He's going to get him on the high side coming down to the stripe. Austin Jones up to 9th. Last time by, do we last two laps? Tyler Joseph on the 11th lap on a 113 of the 72. His last lap was a 112 of the 304. That's definitely given the opportunity for Brian Harper to close that gap a little bit. Looks like he ran his fastest lap of the race just on lap 10, running a 112 with the 25. Dropped down a little bit in 11th. I think he caught some last traffic. In the 12th lap, he picked it back up to 113. So be interested to see if Brian Harper can catch and run down that number seven. He's been really fast all night long. That being said, do we the NMNTS Monday Night Thunder by Motorson Racing Magazine Continental 150 from here at Watkins Glen. That's turned out to be a pretty good race so far. A lot of good drivers out there. We haven't seen a lot of crashes and accidents. A lot of cars go off the track like we thought we would. Um, that being said, wanted to give a big shout out to our sponsors tonight, Simspec TV, or excuse me, SimspecPC.com. Go check them out at www.simspecpc. Also want a big, big shout out to Quality Goods from Hancock Oil Can. Go check out their men's fragrances and their ladies' fragrances at www.oilcanhancocks.com. Pick something up for a significant other in your life and glad, I'm sure they'd be very much appreciated by it. So not much has changed here in the past couple of laps. Everybody strung out trying to just hit their marks, not overshoot any corners. Your top five, Tyler Justice in first, Brian Hartford second, David Levine is up to third, fourth is Blake Neese, and fifth is Mike Bruno. It looks like Mike Bruno's getting a little pressure right now from the nine of Ant, or excuse me. The nine of Aiden Young. He yeah, has up close to his bumper there, but it looks like Bruno's now able to pull away from him and entered into turn one. Big smooth entry. That's the big key here at this track. If you can make turn one, that's us. Andrew Cardinale off of turn one. Of your track. He, he made contact with the outside retaining wall. The 81 overshot the turn. That's unfortunate. You get damaged by hitting any of the walls, do you? It takes a long time to get back around this track. That's for sure. That's a tough break for the 81 to Andrew Cardinal. He might have in a short pit get some damage fixed. The unfortunate thing is you don't have that luxury of pitting under caution here. It's going to be 100% under green, so he's going to have to make a decision there what he wants to do right away to get in there and pit or try and ride it out as long as he can. Is Alan Westman able to get by him? That'll shuffle him back to the eighth position. As he's keeping up with Alan Westman currently, so we'll see if the damage to that truck is detrimental or not. That's one thing about the road courses, do you can't get a little damage on your truck and get away with it. You know, usually what happens is you break some momentum, but you've got a lot of little how do you say it runs between turns here to where the arrow is not that critical as long as you don't hit the wall too hard where you affect your steering it looks like andrew cardinal just went into the wall again down now to turn one do he he is deaf trouble with that turn he gets the truck back going in the right direction a lot of these guys having to check up coming through turn one trying to avoid the 81 he may be pitting here i think something might be up with that truck 
Yeah, once you damage the steering here in this these trucks or anything at this road course, it's tough to get back around and maintain any speed. So be interested to see if he's able to get back to pit road safely without causing any more problems or getting any more accidents or crashes himself and was able to get his car worked on, get it fixed and get back out and try to make a charge. I've been watching the leaders here, Tom, and it looks like the 59 of David Levine starting to reel in Brian Hartford in the 71 for second. David looked very strong since the start of this race, just picked his line and has been running it, picking off car by car, and he is starting to pull up to the back bumper of the 71. Matt Skipper around in turn one. He's currently one lap down. Everybody gets by cleanly. He'll get it back underway. So turn one seems to be the problem child here tonight, Tom. Yeah, I definitely do. That'll be definitely be a corner to watch for all these drivers, especially if here's the unique thing. If you get right behind a car or a truck, if you're riding with any. Oh, got a big wreck here in the bus stop. Somebody hit hard. Looks like uh Corey Walters got caught. Somebody come by him. Looks like another car spun into the dirt in the bus stop as he was coming through slow. Um, you get right behind a truck and you're riding that bumper up to that braking point. You lose focus. Remember where your braking link was based on the side of the track and the signs. You could find yourself running right into the rear end of somebody and punting them. Brian Hartford in the S's gets in the wall. He's able to save it, but David Levine's going to be right on his bumper now. That's going to cost a little momentum, but I wouldn't be surprised to see David Levine make, come up and make a pass here, buddy. He's definitely trying to capitalize on the 71's mistake. Let's see if David Levine can't get back around. Looks like the 71 has minimal damage on his truck. Just barely scraped it, got sideways, but great piece of driving there by Brian to keep it going. And David Levine does get around the 71. Look like we're able to see the two no brakes TV trucks back there in 18th and 19th position. That's Craig Lerman and Gordon Nelson Jr. They got by and it looks like they passed and lapped the skipper truck again. He just spun again. I think that's for a third or fourth time now. He's just having a struggle tonight here at this road track. And it looks like he's going to get it pointed the right direction here. Looks like we may have some action going on between David Levine and Brian Harford. David Levine was able to get by. He's up in front of him by two tenths now. Let's see if Brian Harford can regather, get some momentum going, and catch back up and make a challenge for that second place position. He got a lap down car right in front of him. The 18 of Blake Knees trying to get himself up into position and try and battle with these guys as well. Yeah, I got him. Levine's going to have to be pretty tough here. He's following a car that's already spun two or three times and I struggled tonight at this track. So he's coming up here. Looks like he is up coming into turn seven. Let's see if he can hold on, dive down to the bottom, get to the inside of that truck. And he gets him on the right side. He lets him go by. Good move by the 28 truck to give them an opportunity to go by. Dave Levine passes and so does. Billy Hardgrove. Good to see Billy That's, Hardgrove, the fisherman, back in the lineup tonight. Great. And definitely a cool move there by Matt Skipper. He's been struggling, and uh, the leaders came up on him in a hurry, and he's going to let him go by and not race him super hard here and let these guys just battle it out. So very cool move there by the 26 truck. Austin Jones, yet again, has battled his way up. He's been holding his, holding his own there in 7th place, 16 seconds back in the leader, all the way from 31st. So I would imagine that charge he made probably took a little bit of a toll on his tires. Now, tires are important here, but they kind of have a tendency to hold up going back and forth, turning left and right. So 
I'm going to imagine we'll probably see around a 35, 38 lap green flag run here doing before the leaders start coming in. We'll have to double check with that and see if that is true to the case, but I'm just guessing at this point. That being said, it'll be interesting to see these guys, once they start making their green flag pit stops, who's going to get on pit road clean without speeding, because it's a sharp right into pit road coming off of turn 8. And that definitely takes a lot of communication with the trucks behind you if they are going to be on a different pit sequence than you. Coming through that turn, a lot of guys like to hug the bottom. And if you're slowing up trying to get into the pit road area, that could be a big problem for these guys not knowing that you're going down pit road. Riding on board now with Blake Neese in the 18 car. I'm going to jump down and see if I can't get a little closer look at his running. He's falling around currently the number 71 of Brian Hartford in position 3. Looks like he's gaining a little ground on him, Billy. Well, he's been running a good race. We're taking a look at Blake Neese here. Looking out the cockpit view. Hopefully you get a good look at that. Um, it gives you an idea of what these drivers are seeing as they're going around these corners, especially coming up right here. If you're not paying attention to those signs and be able to hit your braking point, you wait too long. He's going to run in the back of him, but he's got it pretty smooth, wired up for sure. He's definitely catching Mr. Hardrow on each run here. Excuse me, Brian Harper. Tyler Just is currently working on the 74 of Jesse Mason to put him a lap down, and he does. As Tyler Justice keeps working through lap traffic right now, his car looks to be, or his truck looks to be, pretty spot on to what he wants it to be, and he is currently 3.8 seconds ahead of David Levine. Going back through here in the 8th position, Andrew Cardinale able to recover and get some spots back. He's still in the top 10 even after those two mishaps. So 81 truck is definitely strong. Just had a couple of little minor uh, misses there in turn 1. Looking at lap times, Dave Levine starting to catch the leader. The last two laps he ran in the 112s where Tyler Justice ran in the 113. So this lap traffic definitely helping out David Levine on this run. He looks like he's got his lead up to under three seconds now. Moving back from about four and a half just a little bit earlier. So this lap traffic's taking its toll on the leader and it's having to slow up to get around these guys safely. Given the 59 of David Levine racing here, an opportunity to go through and run him down and hope and possibly catch up to him. The next two trucks to go a lap down, the 818, that's Derek Robinson, the 5 of Jason Alexander. These guys have been battling pretty hard the past couple of laps as they are both on the lead lap trying to possibly stay ahead of the 7 for as long as they can just in case something happens. But that's going to make it tough for Tyler Justice to get around these guys battling so hard. Derek Robinson overshoots the corner, is going to let the 7 by with ease. Tyler just has caught a break there. So Tyler's going to pick up another one coming through the S's, moving up to the bus stop. Put another car lap down. It looks like he's going to be coming in here to the bus stop pretty hard. We got the 71 big time crash right in the middle of the exit of the S's. Brian Hartford, big crash, running fourth at the time. Tough break. He's running fast car. Well, 
Well, that's going to open the door for Blake Neese to move up into third, and Brian Harper will go back to fourth right now. One thing about spinning on this track, do we have an opportunity with the, the gaps between the drivers that are back, you know? Even if you spin, if you can turn around and get going, the eighth place car is 29 seconds back of the leader. So if you're running up in sixth or seventh, you've got 26 seconds to be able to go through and make your pit stop. Or get the car back on before somebody comes up and puts any pressure on you to get by. As I'm watching now, it looks like Alan Weston just pushes a little hard. DJ Hargrove getting seven. involved with Matt Skipper here. That's on the bus stop. That is not good. DJ Hargrove was running in the top 15. Well, Tom, the longer we go in these green flag runs, uh, I'm getting a little bit of drama heating up out here at Watkins Glen. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to go back and see if we can see what happened there. I'm going to jump on board with DJ Hardgrove in the replay and see what I can find out. Looks like he got into it a little bit there at the bus stop with, uh, I'll double check and take a peek here. Oh, it looks like the 26 had spun completely and he pulled right back out on the traffic. I don't know, buddy. Tough break for that. DJ Hardgrove again getting caught up in it. There's just nothing. He had no place to go in that 26. I don't know what he was thinking. Pulling out back in traffic. Generally, you want to hold your truck there as long as you can to keep people from running into you like that. That was a pretty bad collision for DJ Hardgrove. That might do it for him tonight. That's a lot of damage to the front of his car. It looks like his steering might have a little bit of an issue, too. Right now, I got my eyes back on the 33 of Austin Jones. He is in sixth, trying to work on the lap down truck. 74 of Jesse Mason, and he is working hard, trying to catch Aiden Young to break into the top five. He started on the tail of this race, and Austin Jones has raced his way to sixth, working on trying to catch the fifth place truck right now. Austin Jones having a great night. Yeah, I agree, dude. It's been a lot of fun out here watching Austin Jones get after it. Looks like he's going to go by the five truck, getting into turn seven, turns it down. He's able to pick up a little bit of a little bit of uh, momentum on the truck in front of him. Let's see who that is. That would be T.J. Popham in the 32 truck, running in 24th position. T.J. Popham got a bit of a late start. He's currently three laps down in this race. We'll see if he's able to get back a lap or two on the pick green tag pits, but those should be coming up shortly. Do it. I think we're going to see a few guys start peeling off now and then. The one thing that you're going to see, here's what's key. Pit stop, total pit stop on pit road is probably going to be about 45 seconds. So if you take a look at that and you're running first right now, at least the slowest you're possibly going to come out or lowest you're possibly come out on the green flag right now for Tyler Dresses would be 12. That being said, everybody else still has to pit as well. So the key is right now for these guys, they need to start saving fuel now if they want to have the opportunity to finish this race maybe pick up one or two laps of green flag running that should get them an opportunity to pick up as much time as possible and some of these other drivers could also even lead to an extra pit stop for those guys and you have one left that could be tremendous and that would definitely give you about a minute that you can make up on this field josh sturgill currently the first guy to come down pit road on the lead lap he was running in 12th place Oh, we got P.J. Popham just wrecked. Trying to see where he was wrecking. It looked like he was trying to get on pit road, was it? He came out hard and spun hard to the right coming back out of turn 8 to get on pit road. He hit the inside wall. He'll continue down to his pit stop. Austin Jones making the move for fifth on Aiden Young here. Going into the bus stop. He's going to get him. The 33 Chuck has fought his way into fifth. And if Austin Jones can get somehow a lucky break, maybe a full course caution, we may see him battle for the lead as he has to be the fastest truck on the track right now. And he has passed everybody he's come up to so far. 
Yeah, definitely. Tyler Justice is coming on turn 7 between turn 7 and 8. Got a little bit loose. Just about lost it. He was able to hold on to it pretty good. He's now going by Craig Lerman in the 43 No Brakes TV truck to put him a lap down coming into turn 1. These tires have to be getting worn out here. Yeah, definitely do it. I think we're starting to see tires take a toll as these guys going through the S's. They're really working the steering wheel hard to keep the car from spinning out underneath them. So it'll be interesting to see here in the next five, six laps if you got more guys coming down pit road, get them fresh tires. Jesse Mason around in between 7 and 8. He's going to take it down into the pit area and get some service. But after Tyler Justice got real loose there, that really closed the gap. He was about 4.5 seconds, and now he's 1.7 ahead of David Levine. And that really is going to cut into what he could have saved coming down pit road with a 5 second gap on these guys. The way things are turning out, Dewey, we are halfway this time by with the leaders, so it looks like we're looking at a one-stop race. The 33 um, of Austin Jones on pit road, along with the 9 of Aiden Young, 5th and 6th, both down pit road currently. I think that's what these drivers were looking to do, is come make it halfway, drop in and get some fresh tires, fresh good years, and get moving on these trucks. I'm interested to see if anybody can stay out a little longer and pick up some extra time. You know, if they're able to close it, open the gap on these drivers, it's just one thing, fresh tires, when you're looking and you're mired in traffic, don't make a huge big difference. So some of those guys who are short pitting, they're going to be dropping back, they're going to lose that track position. It's going to be tough for them to get back up through the field, a lot harder than one would think with these tires. Uh, fresh tires is harder to get through the field here at Watkins Glen. The 18 of Blake Neese, your third place running vehicle, is going to pull it down into pit road. Looks like Mike Bruno, who's running fourth, is going to follow him down pit road. So we already got some strategies coming to play here. Tyler Justice, David Levine, both still out on the track. And the next closest truck's going to be, it looks like, a minimum of 20 seconds plus. Yeah, we have a few guys pit right now. Looks like we had another couple of guys just pull off in the pit road. That's going to move Alan Westman in the number 28 of the Jizz of Minnesota in the no-brake TV car. They'll move him up to fifth under the green flag stop. So it'll be interesting to see these guys, if they have started saving fuel, how long they can run on green on a tank of fuel. So be interesting to see how we're wrapping up towards the close end of this race. We're halfway down, Dewey. Um, we're starting to see these guys pit at midpoint. We've seen this several times in the oval track, but in the road courses, the key is to stay out as long as you possibly can. Your leader, Tyler Justice, down on pit road, and that's going to give the lead to David Levine as he stays out. After their pit stops, Austin Jones, Aiden Young only fell back to 7th and 8th here, but they should be gaining some spots as these guys are on pit road. That strategy may play out, because Austin Jones has been extremely fast here tonight. See if he plays his cards correctly, maybe he can get himself to the front. Yeah, we got the leader, Tyler Justice, just now coming back on to the racetrack. We currently show him in second position, but I think he's running a little bit further back than that, usually the places of update here. Once they hit turn, usually you have to hit the green flag or the checkered. The start-finish line. I'll tell you what, Dewey. Struggling tonight, buddy. I'm getting myself all tongue-tied around my own tongue. For you viewers out there, I apologize. Try to make it better for you. 
And Watkins Glenn usually does that to you. David Levine hard on the binders. He's going to bring it into pit road. We'll see who that surrenders the lead to. So it looks like Tyler Justice is able to come back on the track in third position, 25 seconds back to the current leader, Dave Levine. That being said, Blake Neese came out in front of him and is running in 22 seconds back. So take a look and see how this all pans out. If you guys are going to be moving up here pretty quick, Dewey. I'm curious to see how everyone's strategy is going to play out here. As everyone is now extremely spread out across Watkins Glen. So Piz strategy is going to be key here. Well, Blake Neese is currently your leader. Tyler Justice right behind him in second. David Levine scored in third. Mike Bruno fourth. And Austin Jones fifth. That being said, dude, we've got a lot of hard driving left to go here. 27 to go in this. Everybody looks like everybody's been able to cycle through and take their pit stop. Uh, Blake Neese come out. Must have had a pretty quick stop, dude. He comes out leading the race. Austin Jones is going to make the move on Mike Bruno. Mike Bruno's smoking the brakes down on the inside. Austin Jones is going to get by him here in the bus stop, and that battle is for fourth. Blake Neese in the 18 truck currently 2.6 seconds ahead of Tyler Justice, who's stuck behind DJ Hardgrove racing hard, and that's let David Levine get right to his bumper. David Levine on the outside of Tyler Justice here, as Tyler Justice is going to try and get around the two. And that got interesting really quick there, but Tyler Justice comes out with second. Now we've got a pretty good battle going on there, Dewey, between David Levine and DLR Racing and Tyler Justin's here at SimSpec TV car. Got to say a big shout out to David Levine Racing. Had a great run last night in K&N. He's doing the same thing again tonight here in the Berkshire Hathaway number 59. Chevy Silverado putting some pressure on the number 7 of Tyler Justice. Well... That's given an opportunity for Blake Neese in the 18 to pull out to a 2.2 second lead. Let's see if he can hang on to her. There's another truck car that was really fast last night. Driver Blake Neese in the K&N series. He had, or excuse me, the Arca series. He was lightning quick last night. So let's see if he can redeem himself after wrecking a little bit later in that last race last night to get an opportunity to come back and pick himself up on the podium, as they say in the road course racers. Looks like they gained about two tenths on the leader of Blake Neese, down to a two second lead. So right now, Blake Neese is in first, Tyler Justice second, David Levine third, Austin Jones fourth, Mike Bruno fifth. The gap from first to fifth right now is 8.4 seconds. I wonder, do we, in this race, you know, all these drivers on their trucks have what we call a quick pick in iRacing. 
wonder, it'd be interesting to know if any of them took advantage of that during that pit stop, because if they didn't, um, they get into a little bit of damage, they're going to have to pit quick and get that fixed, but right now, the way this race has been going, any kind of an unscheduled stop is going to cost you big time in positions and track position. Right now we're watching a battle up front for second between David Levine in the 59 and Tyler Justice in the 17 as the 18 goes around at the entrance of Pitt Road. He's going to back his truck up, get him going again. That was your lead, you ladies and gentlemen. Blake he spun coming out of turn eight. Just drive down and got a little little hard under the gas on exit and with that rear end right around, did a quick donut, turned around, got back going, and he had to drop the sixth position. That being said, he'll be able to get back up and keep moving and hopefully stay on the track and pick up a couple of positions back. That opens the door for David Levine to go out and put some pressure on Tyler Justice, who's your new leader. Austin Jones from 31st place to third, only 47.7 seconds back to the leader. One heck of a run for Austin Jones tonight. It's good to see that in the David Levine Racing Stable of Racers. Austin Jones, David Levine out there battling with the leaders. A good show for them tonight. That being said, we got a quite a bit of little battle going on right now between the 28 of Alan Westman and the 31 of Clayton Kurtz. Allen falls him down in through the bus stop. You might as well add the 74 into that truck falling in around, although the 74, I think, is lapped down. Take a look and just double check for sure. Psych Allen Westman was able to get by Clayton Kurtz for 8th position. Now it's time for him to go start working on the 81 to Andrew Cardinal. He was pretty fast earlier tonight, so he's got an opportunity to catch up and pick up another position here. Uh, Allen Westman in the 28 car. The no Breaks TV. Want to give a big shout out while I have your, have your attention. Got some exciting racing going on in the track. The leader David Levine catching up to the Tyler Justice less than a half a second back now. He's picked up some good speed, but Big shout out right now to our sponsors here at the Monday Night Thunder by Motorsons Racing Magazine. Just want to say a big thank you to Quality Goods there at Hancock Quality Goods. Check out the Hancock Oil Can. Go visit them. They got some pretty good exciting stuff out there. Go visit them at oilcanhancocks.com. Pick up your fragrances for your significant other out there. But they carry both men's and women's. From what I understand, Tom Jenks, our producer up there in the booth, is gotten his shipment in and he says he's enjoying it very much it smells great that being said i also want to give a big shout out to simspec pc towers um they're a pretty regular nightly sponsor of the trucks tonight they got two of them out here that they run primarily tyler justice in the seven and mike Bruno in the 19. go check them out at simspec tv or excuse me simspec pc.com uh see if they can't set you up the pc tower to go through and do some of this Fine racing like we're seeing tonight. A lot of hard driving going on. Looks like we're going to have a battle for the lead here shortly, Dewey. It's definitely shaping up to be a good one. David Levine all over Tyler Justice right now. Tyler Justice trying to not make any mistakes and give the 59 truck an opening. So often did that happen. Sometimes when you're running these road courses, I've been on them before, Dewey, and the mistakes that I've made when I'm on these tracks... This is one track you definitely do not want or cannot afford to race out of your mirror. You get too close to a corner and you're racing in your mirror, you miss your braking position. He's going right by you because he's got a lead on you right there. So one little mistake and one little hiccup of momentum cause cause you to lose that momentum. You start running behind you, pushing you on your bumper, is going to go right by, Dewey. Yeah, right now, David Levine, 0 0.389 seconds behind Tyler Justice. Just a, right around 20 laps to go here. Let's see if Tyler Justice can hold him off and pick up the victory. He's been very dominant so far, but the 59 truck all over him right now.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to jump on board here and try to see if I can't get our producer up there in the boot. Take a look at Austin Jones' truck, see what we can do, see what he's doing going around the track. Go ahead, jump on board with him in the number 33, starting from 31st position up to 3rd. Tyler Justice off the track on the front straightaway. 59 to his outside. The battle for the lead is on at the strike. Tyler Justice really loose off the turn there. He's going to get him back here in turn one, but David Levine looking for the crossover into the S's. This could get hairy here. David Levine thinks better of it. He tucks back behind the seven truck. I got, I agree, Dewey. We have riding back here with Austin M. Jones. He was probably getting a little excited up there seeing those two battle side by side going in turn one. Tough, tough corner to get through side by side. So it was interesting to see David just back off for a second and give him the position back. And he'll go work on him again. That's a good indication right there. One little mistake, and the other car is going right by you. Right in front of them, the 11 of Blake Falone spun. Looks like they're not going to lose any momentum trying to avoid him. Austin, get her off track just a little bit. Two wheels in the grass. He maintains his position and momentum, and he's moving up quick, Dewey. Looks now to me Austin Jones is driving the wheels off of that truck. He can get by. And he does get by in turn eight, drops her down to the bottom, kisses the bumpers a little bit, and off and he goes. So he'll have to get back in. Nothing but open racetrack in front of him, so he should have a pretty good opportunity to go through and catch up to these two drivers. Just jumping on board with Alan Westman. Just came out of the pits. Looked like he made an unscheduled pit stop. He'll maintain ninth position at this time. He's going to pull in right behind Andrew Cardinal in the 81 in the standings. Does the 59 of Dave Levine have anything for Tyler Justice? Does Austin Jones have enough time to catch these two before the end of the race? Only time will tell. Tyler Justice with a little bit of gap on the 59 now. That looks like he's able to open up that lead to eight tenths, almost a second. Coming up through the S's is the seven of Tyler Justin with some spec PC car. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, we're at the NMNTS Monday Night Thunder. Presented by Motor Sims Racing Magazine. We're out here at Watkins Glen running the Continental Tire 150. Uh, right now we're about three quarters of the way through. We're going to have next time by about 16 laps to go in this race. Looking forward to seeing an exciting finish, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. want to say a big thank you to the title sponsor, Motor Sims Racing. Go check them out at www.motorsimsracing.com. See what they have to offer. We appreciate them being on board all the season. Also here in the Truck Series, a big thank you to SimSpec PC. Uh, Go check them out at www.simsecpc. They, they ex are experts at putting together sim racing PC towers. Go check them out. If you're running under a budget, they can take care of you. You've got a big, large, deep pocket to dig into and spend a lot more. You can do that too, but they're definitely a great group of guys who provide excellent service and even better, provide an amazing product. So go check them out. Also want to be a big shout out. To Hancock's Quality Goods, check out Oil Can Hancock. Go take a look at their website at www.oilcanhancock.com. Pick yourself up some fragrance for your significant other. Pretty good products there as well, too. We always want to thank those both of those sponsors for being on board with us race in, race out. They do a heck of a job as well as their drivers. Generally out there, Bradley Wilson has a truck out there for the Hancock Oil Can. The Sinsec PC racers that are dressed as Mike Bruner are always exciting to watch.
Tyler Justice right now able to open up a pretty good gap on the 59 of David Levine. Last time by was 1.1 seconds. And we'll see if David Levine is gaining or losing here on the 7 truck. That being said, do we the top 9 cars are all we got on the lead lap at this time. Looks like we're getting ready to have the top 8 go down as well. Once the 7 of Tyler Justice, if he's able to get by the 78 of Cody West coming up here. Cody West is coming through the S's as well, too. Um, Tyler's just coming in to turn three right now, and he'll be turning around, turn four, and the S's coming up towards the bus stop. So at that point, if he's able to catch him, pass him, that'll leave just eight cars on the lead lap, do we? Um, something you see in road courses quite a bit. You make the wrong pit stop, wrong timing, have a little accident. All those little delays or the cut corners add up, causing the time over the length of the race. Looks to be first, second, and third all have clear track to each other right now. Austin Jones not able to close the gap. Tyler Justice keeping about the same gap from David Levine. It'll be interesting how they react coming up on a couple of these lap cars. You got the 78 that's looked like he's getting ready to go a lap down here shortly. The 81 of Andrew Cardinal, eighth place finish. Have you ever heard of that? It's been a long time since we've talked about something like that. Do we an eighth, ninth, top ten cars being down one lap by the end of the race? But that's road course racing for you. A few mistakes you make, you lose a little bit of time. And if there's a guy out there who's running like Tyler Justice has and had really no mistakes tonight. That's what happens. Those top three drivers have run a super clean race. Congratulations for David Levine and Austin Jones. DLR Racing, David Levine Racing is putting up a heck of a show now, taking two places on the podium as we speak. We'll see if they can hold on to him. we got Mike Bruno back there in fourth place. He's 18 seconds back. So it's going to take a mistake by one of those top three drivers in the next 15 laps as we go 15 laps to go. For that gap to close but you know what we've seen it happen before we've seen it already this race where a leader spin for example when Blake Neese of the 18 came out of turn eight and just got it got a little loose spun gave up the lead and now he's mired back in fifth position so we'll see what happens here in the closing lap too it looks like it's going to be pretty fun to watch these guys go around the track you can see the rubber starting to get built up pretty good too definitely and this all comes down to just hitting your marks lap after lap making sure you're consistent don't get your tires off into the grass. Get yourself sideways and ruin your evening. Tyler Justice opening up the lead right now. 1.6 seconds ahead of David Levine. He is 4.9 seconds ahead of third place Austin Jones. And to give you a perspective, his SimSpec teammate, Mike Bruno, in fourth is 20 seconds behind. To give you some perspective, so do we, one of those top three cars spin, but the momentum that Mike Bruno is going to be carrying, if they spin, he's going to have a good opportunity to make up that 20 seconds in a hurry. Um, not only do you have to get the car headed in the right direction, but they got to turn around and get it out in front of traffic and get moving in the wheel straight and going down the rack. That being said, that 16 seconds somebody spin opens up the door for Mike Bruno and Blake Lee to come up and pick up a couple positions, potentially. Right now, Tyler Just is on the back bumper of the 78 of Cody West. And Cody West looks like he's going to challenge him down to the bus stop here. And Tyler just had to smoke the brakes a little bit. 78 not going down without a fight. That's going to let the 59 catch up a little bit here. We'll see what happens. Tyler Justice tries to make an aggressive move around the slower truck. But he needs to be careful because David Levine is in the perfect spot to capitalize on a mistake. Well, you know what? That's racing, Dewey. He's the first car. What He's getting ready to last car and lead lap. If I was him, I'd be fighting to do everything I could to hold him off, too. Looks like, oh, he's contact. The tires getting in. Tyler Justice dives to the bottom. They touch doors. They both get away pretty easy. Looks like at this time, Goldie West is going to give it up to 
David Levine also. Contact between those two drivers. I don't think there was much damage done doing anything that's going to really be catastrophic to the 7 if I would just, if anything, you could really slow them down. I had to cut a second and a half lead that Tyler Justice had over David Levine down to point seven. See if David Levine can't run him down from here. As I'm sure Tyler Justice's heart is racing right now. He almost lost the lead with that little bit of contact. And you know what? That's part of the race, and Dewey can't can't say anything bad about Cody West there. He tried to hold on to his position as long as he could to remain on the lead lap. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. That's part of racing. You can't expect these guys. Yeah, they're quicker. You want to move over for them, give them room. But hold your line. If they're that much faster, you make the driver who's catching you drive around. That's one of the things about being a faster race car driver. you got to be able to get round guys when you can and not expect them to move over. And you didn't see Cody West doing that one bit, giving up that position. I like that. It's pretty admirable, if you ask me. Blake Neese with the power move in the bus stop to get fourth place away from Mike Bruno. We're coming up on 10 to go this time by Dewey, so if there are any of those drivers back there in the top five who've been trying to save anything, now's the time to let her rip and really get after it. you got to drive your your arse off to say it politely to get back up to these top three cars in Austin Jones and David Levine and Tyler Justice. They, they got something else going on here. They're 20 seconds ahead of the field. It's going to take a mistake for them to happen, but you know what? Stranger things have happened. We've already seen a little bit of, any, you know, one little potential slip messing around or getting side by side with a lap car could cost you. So let's see what happens here in the next 10 laps. Tyler Justice able to open it up to a second lead, but he got a little loose in the S's. David Levine closed on him a little bit. Let's see if the 59 can't catch up as he is starting to drive the wheels off of that truck. I think David Levine's realizing he needs to make a move quickly as the 7 truck, if he gets too far ahead of him, he is not going to have enough time to catch him. Tyler Justice gets up a little high there out of turn one. David Levine is on his bumper. Back of the field here a little bit, Dewey. Although these cars are lapped down, they're still racing for position. We got the 28, Alan, Alan Westman, challenging for that top 10 pos position that's held by Josh Sturzer right now. Looks like they both have a little bit of damage on their truck. I thought he was going to get him in turn two, but he decided to hold off a little bit and he's trying to pick him up now going through the s's coming into the bus stop right now i'm going through and just trying to check seeing some of these races going back for a position back there all these guys are lapped down but you know what there's still positions to be made up so we'll go back keep an eye on them see what's going on back there as well david levine still waiting to make his move as we're getting ready to come across the stripe to tick off another lap here. We'll see if the 59 has anything for Tyler Justice, who's led virtually this entire race. And if you watch David Levine, he is using braking points much further into the turn than Tyler Justice, just trying to drive it harder and harder to catch the 7. Yeah, it's going to be tough, Dewey. David Levine's going to have to be careful. It's kind of a fine line between driving it in as hard as you can and taking care of your front two tires. Those front tires are critical on this racetrack. So if you burn them off breaking, it's going to be tough to get to make those corners. Those front two tires are very, very critical out here. David Levine was great through the bus stop right there. Pulls right to the back bumper of Tyler Justice. Couple of lap down trucks right ahead of these guys. This is going to get really interesting here with just a handful of laps to go. As David Levine has been all over the back of Tyler Justice the past three laps. I'm 
Austin Jones, he is now three seconds behind. He picked up half a second in one lap. So maybe the seven or the 33 is trying to catch the seven and the 59, just holding back a little bit, but now he's letting it all loose. As Tyler Justice is now trying to work his way around the double zero of Gordon Larson Jr., and he's going to get by him here heading into the bus stop. I wonder if old Gordon was just being played there, letting the young buck from the household go by of Tyler Justice in the seven. No, that's just Gordon Larson Jr. He's a class act, damn good driver in my opinion, always gives people space where they can and take it where he can get it. So good move by him, that's solid. Meanwhile, David Levine could not catch Gordon Larson before he got to the bus stop, and that allowed Tyler Justice to pull away a little bit here. Austin Jones is closing the gap pretty good, Dewey. His last lap was a 111.86. He has really poured it on now. Holy moly, he gets by the double zero of Gordon Larson, and now it's just clear running in front of him to go after that second place car. Austin Jones definitely turning up the heat in that 33 truck, but does he have enough time to catch the two leaders? Last time by, he was a tenth and a half faster to leader and a full second faster than the second place car, Dewey. He is wheeling that car around here pretty good. It's fun watching him move. I think he's going to catch these guys pretty quick. Tyler Justice able to navigate traffic pretty well here. David Levine right behind him doing the same. Now under three seconds for Austin Jones making his way back. Started 31st tonight all the way up to third and climbing. Like we had to the 818 truck of Derek Robinson head out off into the dirt off of turn seven. Let's see what kind of momentum Austin Jones can pick up on this lap going around turn two is, or turn one. See, so that's the key where the lap starts right there, buddy. Now he is definitely reeling in David Levine right now as Tyler Justice is pulling away from these two. Not a lot of laps left here, so if David Levine or Austin Jones have anything left in their trucks, they need to turn it on right now. Austin Jones sideways there, able to hold on to it. He is really trying to drive the wheels off of that truck. Yeah, he's doing everything he can do to try to get in these closing laps. we got six to go, five to go this time by. His leader, Tyler Justice, comes out of turn eight, gets back on the throttle off the bump stops, comes on down, crosses start finish line. That'll leave us five to go, Dewey. And a half a second gained by David Levine here. I wonder if David was holding on for a few laps, maybe letting Tyler get out to a pretty decent lead, and he's going to turn it back up. Interesting to see here if David Levine has enough to catch him as all of a sudden that 59 truck's coming alive. Here on the bus stops where David Levine has been quicker and has been able to catch up to Tyler Justice. Looks like maybe this next time lap by, Tyler might, looking at the gaps right there, he might pick up a lap car coming out of turn seven or eight. If not, then he's going to struggle to get by him getting into turn one. If he can't do it then, the bus stop is going to be the only place he's going to be able to do it. That could hold him up, give David Levine and Austin Jones a chance to catch them both. And that's Andrew Cardinale right in front of them. He is an eighth. He's the last car on the lead lap, so he's not going to go down without a fight, I don't believe. But that remains to be seen here with not a lot of laps left. Tyler just is trying to hold on here from David Levine and Austin Jones.
just a perspective, you can see those three in the same frame. Fourth place, Blake Neese is 30 seconds back. Fifth place, Mike Bruno, 32 seconds back. Sixth place is Aiden Young. He is 40 seconds back. Clayton Curtis is 1 minute 8 seconds. Andrew Cardinale, 1 minute 10 seconds back. There's a whole group of trucks now in front of the 7 of Tyler Justice. This is not looking good for him as he's trying to hold off David Levine here with just a couple of laps to go. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be free to go this time by doing so. He's got to fight by these lap cars without giving up too much time. He gets by the 5 of Jason Alexander here into turn number 1. Like he timed that just about perfect, as good as he possibly could, coming through turn one to make that pass, do we? One of the big things to think about when you're picking up through lap cars and you're picking up slower cars in front of you, you got to be picky about. We talked with that about Tyler Justice too earlier in the interview after going over the DA Graphics Pole Award win. In that interview, he said you got to be picky about when you're going to be passing drivers out here because you just never know. You got to pick the right time and the right spots to be able to get by and clean and keep your momentum up. He is now on the back bumper of the 81 of Andrew Cardinale. And Andrew not really giving him the inside position here, making him work for it a little bit, and that's going to let David Levine maybe close the gap. And right behind them, Austin Jones, he is lying in wait as well. Yeah, it would be interesting to see these next few corners, just how impatient Tyler Justice gets. We don't know him to be the most patient driver on the track. He's always been super fast, and he's going to have to fight to get by Andrew Cardinale in this lap. If he wants to put him a lap down, and I was, I was Andrew Cardinale, I'd be driving my wheel off as well, just trying to stay on the lead lap. Tyler got a little loose there coming out of eight. And David Levine is closing the gap right now. Austin Jones is there as well. One thing about Watkins Spen Dewey, it is a tough track to pass on. Very few places can you really get a run on somebody and, and get a good solid pass up. One of the biggest is turn eight. If you're able to time that corner right and get a run off of turn eight and run down that front stretch, you're in good shape. But trying to pass somebody through the bus stops is one of the hardest things you can do and you're going to find yourself either going off the track, running into somebody, or getting a corner cut. Look at David Levine moving right up to the bumper to the seven title justice as he's mired behind the 81 of Gardner Cardinal. First, second, and third are now Nosedale, Tyler Justice, David Levine, Austin Jones, all within striking distance of one another. Andrew Cardinale trying to stay on the lead lap here. He does not have to give that position up currently as he is battling to stay on the lead lap. No, These three trucks are all nose to tail. Job doing, keeping his position and staying on the lead lap. In the meantime, that seven of Tyler Justice since that CC truck is mired in between a big old Dave Levine racing sandwich car. Our entry card now in front of Dave Levine and Austin Jones both on DLR racing. So we're going to have a pretty exciting finish coming up here towards the end. We're coming by one to go this time by. So next time by we'll be getting the white flag and one more lap and that'll do or do we? Let's see what happens here in the next couple laps. Tyler Justice is going to look to make the pass here in the bus stop. This could be risky. He's smoking the brakes, trying not to get into the 81. David Levine right there. Yeah, it didn't come up on my screen. David Levine is going to look down to the inside. He's David got Levine, the position. Tyler Justice the side by side. Oh, they touch. He gets a little loose and oh, around goes. Around he goes. David Levine holds on David to it. Levine getting hit. Austin Jones in the wall. David Levine's going to take it. Austin Jones, massive damage, not going to be able to keep going. The 59 through 7 and 8. What a race. David One Levine will win at Watkins Glen. Congratulations to David Levine racing in the 59 of the Berkshire Hathaway pickup. Takes home the win tonight here in the Chevy Silverado. Teams designs, Revan Octa, first year Hackaway. Congratulations to David Levine. He's going to burn those tires down. That was one heck of a pass. It's tough, tough situation there. I'm sure Tyler Justice is going to be upset with that lap car of Andrew Cardinal. But you know what? Andrew Cardinal was doing everything he could to hold his position and stay on the lead lap. We're racers, do we? That's what we do. You can't hold anything against him for that. And I know Tyler's going to be upset. 
may have cost him a win, but you know what? David Levine got that win by driving hard and was able to catch up and get alongside of him on the exit of that turn. They touched. Just unfortunate. Tyler got the worst end of it, but it's part of racing and that happens, buddy. Definitely. Whenever you're battling for the win, you got to pull out all the stops there. I know it's not super intentional contact. It's just racing for the win type of contact. I do want to say tough break to Austin Jones. He had a great race going for him, got involved in that accident there. Looks like he's going to finish eighth, tail of the lead lap. Unofficially, David Levine is your winner. Tyler Justice second. Blake Neese will come home third. Mike Bruno fourth and Aiden Young in fifth. Clayton Curtis sixth. Andrew Cardinal seventh. Austin Jones eighth. Alan Westman ninth and Zach Lindgren tenth. Dude, so we'll wait to give you the heck official of a run there. It was fun to watch. I don't know about you, but you know what? Tough race going all the way through. Kind of got boring at times, but that's road racing. Cars get spread out, and a lot of guys drive hard. But those three coming up at the end, one heck of a run, Dewey. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a little bit of after race impact here. Um, go down, Louie, and take a look at all the uh, top three finishes here. It looks like the end of the race here, Dave Levine finishes in first place. He's taking the lead. It looks like the checkerboard right now has Tyler Justice finishing second. Blake Neese will take home the third position. Mike Bruno was able to come up and take over fourth. Aiden Young got fifth. Clayton Kurtz got sixth. Andrew Cardinal with fourth. 81st remain on the lead lap, it looks like, and got to pull in seventh position. Tough break for Austin Jones, who came a huge new field tonight, 31st all the way to third. He got the last lap rack there. He caused him to go down one lap, unable to finish it. Finish the lap, and he will finish in eighth position, one lap down. Alan Westman, 28th from Jism, Minnesota, and the No Break TV truck finishes ninth, one lap down. And the 10th place, Zach Lingman, number 85. Great run off there tonight, boys. Dewey, what do you think? Pretty exciting finish. That was definitely the closest finish that we have had over here so far. Let's see if we can't get the top three in here. All right, Tom, I was able to catch up with the third place finisher in the 18 truck. Blake, you had a good run going there. I know you spun coming out of eight while you were leading, but you were able to fight your way back up to a third place. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, man, I was doing good there. I was just buying my time behind David until the pit stops, and that luck went my side, and then I just dropped the ball. Yeah, tough break there, Blake, but it was fun watching you run up through the field again tonight. It was a lot of fun watching you run last night, too. So, two great runs. This one finishes a little bit better than last night. So you were fast as heck in the, in the Arca Series. So, as far as I can see, you chalk it up to two good races right now. You got the finish you needed to finish third on the podium. Anybody you want to thank tonight? Uh, man, I just want to thank Michael and Bradley for putting on this great league, all this great racing. Thank you guys for broadcasting, and thank everybody for watching. All righty, Blake. Well, we uh, we appreciate you joining us up here, and uh, we hope to talk to you again here very soon, buddy. Yeah, hopefully tomorrow night. Y'all have a good one. You too, sir. Now is Blake Nees able to turn his luck around from last night, finishing third. See if we can't get Tyler Justice in here. Able to catch up here with the second place finisher, Tyler Justice. 
that was a wild ending to that race. I know not the finish you wanted, but you were still able to get a second place here tonight. Yeah, led pretty much the whole race there and uh, had myself in good position there with two laps to go. Had like over my second lead and I caught Andrew and lead lap, or lap down cars are supposed to move way to the lead lap cars, especially if they're having a battle for the win. But, you know, he never did that. And uh, just wanted to point out that uh, Andrew is a outside teammate to uh, David Levine. So do with that what you wish. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. You know, we got a chance to talk to you after the BA Graphics Bowl Award tonight, Tyler. You had, you did exactly what you needed to do to run this race. Um, congratulations. Great strategy. Great pit stop. Fantastic run all the way through the track position is everything here at, at uh, Watkins Bun. I just want to say, you know, congratulations. on a, It's a tough break getting second there. Some circumstances you had to deal with. It's always tough coming up on a slower car. You know, it looked like Cardinal was trying to remain on the lead lap too, but yep. He did have you sandwiched between a couple of his drivers, so that is what it is. But you know what? Go away with your head held high. You had a one hell of a race. I know it always sucks to finish second. It's kind of like kissing your sister. But that being said, you know what? Be proud of what you did tonight. You are one hell of a driver. Keep your head up. That SimSpec PC truck was fast. And we look forward to doing many more interviews like this where you're at the top of the podium as well. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. No problem. Anybody you want to thank tonight? Yes, sir. I want to thank my uh, sponsor, Simspec, for being on Cars Always. Thank John Barron and Ken Yonts for helping me out with that. And uh, I want to thank Bradley and Michael for the league and uh, you guys in the booth. All right, Tyler. Great job tonight. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Fantastic race. You couldn't run it any better. It's just one of those things we took a look at. But have a good one, buddy. We appreciate your time. All right. Thanks, man. I know a tough break for Tyler, but uh, I'm happy he was able to give a good interview. I know he's upset and, and really didn't want to join us up here in the booth, but uh, I really appreciate that he did. Um, definitely a respect for interview from him, even though I know that he is a little hot under the collar. Yeah, I can't say I wouldn't be either Dewey as a driver, and I'm sure you would be too, but the circumstances align that way, and that's racing, and unfortunately that's something we got to live with. That being said... You know, it looks like we can't see if we can't get a hold of our winner, David Levine, in the number 59 Berkshire Hathaway's truck tonight. And David, you finally got yourself on the top of the podium. A wild finish here at Watkins Gen, but you come away with the victory. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, guys. It's been a long time coming. Last time I think I got a win in this series was Chase Race at uh, probably Talladega last year, so it's been almost a year now and for the whole couple for the whole season and a half these guys have been calling me the closer and it feels great to uh finally earn that nickname and close one out it's definitely not the whole host of circumstances you want you know you never want to get into it with anybody especially a teammate but uh you know <laughs> tyler drove a great race austin on fire all day long uh it was just a whole lot of fun and it feels great to get the uh, berkshire hathaway home services revenue optics and tn designs truck uh, in victory lane yeah David, one hell of a run. Saw you moving up there through the field and also catching them when you can. It looked like you were a lot quicker than Tyler through the bus stops. So that's where you made up a lot of time. But um, I can get where Tyler might have been a little lot upset. That being said, Andrew was still racing to stay on the lead lap. So I'm a racer. You're a racer. Dewey's a racer. I'm doing everything I can to K on that lead lap as well. So it's kind of a tough break. We'll see what happens there. But you know what? One hell of a finish. You you took that race by getting out of turn five, I think it was, getting to the inside, coming up to six, or if it was turn six, coming up to seven, before you guys crashed, coming up to seven. That was one hell of a pass. Great job holding it down there, and we're glad to have you up here in the booth, and hopefully you enjoy your victory celebration night, and crap. congrats to all of David Levine Racing tonight. They had a great run, all your drivers on your team, so... I don't know what else to say, buddy, but go celebrate it, have a blast, and hopefully we get to talk to you again soon. Yeah, 10-4 on that. Hopefully we can uh, sweep the weekend here at Watkins Glen and park it in Victory Lane and, uh, again tomorrow night. That'll be a lot of fun. Take Thanks a lot again. Congrats on the win. Thanks for taking time doing the interview with us. Dewey, you got anything else for our winner tonight here at the MNNTS Monday Night Photo presented by Motorsins Racing Magazine, Continental Tire 150. 
No, I believe that covers it, David. Uh, definitely congratulations and good luck tomorrow, and uh, we'll see if you can't make the same outcome, buddy. Big 10-4 on that. Thank you, guys. You have a great night. You too, sir. Well, I know there's going to be a lot going on in the NMNTS hauler here tonight, but a very exciting finish, and uh, that is why we do these broadcasts, Tom. That was awesome. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I think that's what makes it all worth it. All of these races that we've done for NMNTS and the show that they put on has been phenomenal. It's been exciting racing from start to finish. We're always looking, we're always able to find little battles going on here on the tracks, whether we're on the road course getting way spread out or, you know what, whether we're coming to the start, start finish line or the checkered flag. Solid racing going on by all these drivers. It is what it is. I can't think of any other driver out there that wouldn't do everything they possibly can to get the win on the last two laps of the race. I know I would, and if it takes, you know what, it is what it is. It's racing. That's what happens. Yeah, contact seems to happen quite a bit whenever you're racing for the lead with one or two to go. And I know that wasn't an intentional try and take him out kind of thing. Uh, just a lot of hard racing. And, you know, I think after uh, a little time passes, Tyler Justice will, will understand. And uh, they'll just get back to doing what they do. And that's uh, battling each other for the lead. Um, definitely a big thank you to everybody who tuned in here tonight um if you did not uh, you missed a quite a race here at Watkins Glen if you are on YouTube and you haven't already please subscribe like the video we really appreciate that it helps us out a bunch check us out on Facebook uh no breaks tv check out the NMNTS on Facebook keep up to date with points and results and everything in between and i believe Tom has some uh, housekeeping notes to take care of before we sign off yeah definitely do an exciting race good to see it Tyler and David get together there in between, I think it was turn six and seven. It's just one of those racing deals. I think Tyler's a little more upset with, he's a little tougher to try and get around the 81 car, but you know what? That's part of racing and that happens. So I agree with everything you just said there. Them housekeeping deals, one hell of a show tonight at the NMNTS Monday Night Thunder presented by Motor Sims Racing Magazine. The Continental Tire 150 just didn't let us down tonight at Watkins Glen. I want to give a big shout out to two of our primary sponsors tonight. First is Simspec PC Towers. Go check them out at www.simspecpc.com. They do one heck of a job, ladies and gentlemen, at setting you up your simulator racing tower. Whether you're running on a budget or not, they have everything in between. Great group of guys. One heck of an amazing customer service they provide there. Go talk to them. They're there to answer your questions, help you out any way they can. That being said, go check them out. That also want to give a big shout out to Hancock's Quality Goods. Um, go check them out at their website. Use the code, shopping code of Thunder17 at www.oilcanhancock.com. They got some pretty amazing fragrances out there for men and the ladies too. So gentlemen, ladies, go out there and pick up your significant something significant other something get through the dog days of summer and help out some pretty good fragrance and please support those sponsors that we got coming in here week in week out you know what they do one heck of a job helps they're providing that sponsorship helps to be able to get these broadcasts out for these racers and their families and friends to be able to watch them and anybody else out there on youtube so that being said do we want to say a big thank you to tom jenks up in the booth phenomenal job again with no breaks tv and yourself Appreciate you joining us tonight. And with that, folks, we'll be signing off and we'll check in with you tomorrow right back here at Watkins Glen and we'll be running in the Xfinity cars. So we'll see you then in the Grand National Series. Have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back again tomorrow.